Hello, and welcome to the Workflow Academy. In this comprehensive Platform Academy video series, we'll delve into the transformative world of workflow automation, empowering you to build, monitor, and optimize efficient workflows with ease. Join us as we explore the core tools of ServiceNow's workflow automation suite to build flows and subflows, playbooks, and decision tables on the Now platform. My name is Lisa Hohenstein, and I work as an outbound product manager for the Now platform. My area of expertise is workflow automation, and I create enablement, content, videos, articles, and blogs on the Now community. I have been with ServiceNow for five years, and I've been part of the ServiceNow ecosystem since 2016. Before joining ServiceNow, I was a platform owner, admin, and developer at a customer. In today's video, I'll outline how to create custom activity definitions for your playbooks and how to get started editing activity UI layouts in UI Builder. Quick reminder, I may mention upcoming releases or product features that are still in development. All timelines and features may be subject to change, so please don't make any purchasing decisions based on anything I say today. And here's our agenda for today. First, let's look at the bigger picture about playbooks and playbook experience. Next, I'll give an overview of the different parts needed for playbook activity. Then we'll look at the steps to create a custom activity, followed by a quick demo and resources. And with that, we'll get right into things. Our vision for building playbooks on the Now platform is that we want to enable our ServiceNow developers and business owners to build and manage end-to-end -end workflows on the Now platform. You can imagine playbooks as an extension of flows, as it adds a UI layer to your business logic, allowing agents and requesters to visualize and interact with a defined business process through a simple task-oriented view. The playbook component is available in workspaces or on any Next Experience page, the Now Mobile app, and new in the Washington DC release, Service Portal pages. With the release of Workflow Studio, we're unifying the builder experience for flows, decision tables, and playbooks. So you'll find us no longer referring to pad or process automation designer, but we're building playbooks in Workflow Studio instead. When you build playbooks, you can toggle back and forth freely between working in the Kanban style board view or the new, more visual diagram view. Building playbooks in Workflow Studio is just one side of the coin. The other side is the playbook experience. Agents, process workers, and requesters can interact with each step through the customizable playbook component. Choose between different layouts for the playbook and stage pickers, as well as focused and stacked activity views. Playbooks and playbook experience, as well as the experience demo and additional content are being distributed through the ServiceNow store, allowing us to ship updates and new features on a quarterly basis. These apps are generally being updated with each family release. However, that's usually in the latest previous version, and there will be a newer version available on the store. We recommend checking the application manager regularly and updating the store apps to get access to the latest features and fixes. Now that we have a high level understanding of what playbooks are, let's look at the smallest piece an activity definition. We ship a range of activities with the playbook product for the most common use cases, like create or update tasks, instructions, wait for a condition, show a list, show KB, etc. More activities are included in the store app process automation content, like request manager approval or create child task and many more. Depending on your product entitlement, you will also have act access to activities that ship with out-of-the-box playbooks created by our different product teams, like customer or field service management or IT service management. New in the Washington release, you can now also check the box to include all automation assets, and this allows you to pick any published subflow flow or flow action directly if you don't need an activity experience to be shown on the playbook component during runtime. Now, what are playbook activities made up of? On a high level, there are four different aspects to keep track of, and we'll look at each of them. First, we'll need automation to drive the activity execution and status and this means a flow or flow action. We recommend using an action or subflow over a triggered flow for the automation plan because this allows us to more easily define the activity inputs and outputs as they will be inherited. If you need to collect temporary data at runtime, you can use a flow data definition with flow data variables. All of these components will be included in the demo as well. Second, an activity experience to determine the way the activity is represented on the playbook component. This part is completely optional. So an activity definition does not even need an activity experience attached 
if the process step does not need to be surfaced to the end user. Prior to the addition of automation assets, creating an activity without an experience attached was the way to define an automation-only step. Now we can just run flows and actions directly. Third, you might want to add activity actions to let the user interact with the underlying automation, complete the step, update records, or simply skip over a step to the next one. Activity actions can be defined through various means, and I encourage you to look at the product documentation for Playbook Experience and Next Experience to understand when to use which. Lastly, you may have the need to have an activity definition present itself differently to different people or in the context of different Playbook experiences. The way to achieve this is by adding an activity override record, allowing you to specify conditions and roles for different UI layouts. And with that, we'll get into some practical tips when building custom activities. In the demo for today, I'll walk you through these steps. Create a data definition to collect data, create a subflow to process the data, create an activity definition, add an activity action, and then test the activity in the playbook. Next, I'll create a custom UI layout by cloning an existing one and give it a light edit in UI Builder. Then optionally, define an activity override and create an activity definition with the new UI layout. And lastly, we'll test the new activity in a playbook execution. With the Washington release, we've added a menu item for you to find the flow data definitions more easily. If you are on an earlier release, you might need to navigate to the table manually with the mentioned table name. Here you can define variables similar to variables on a catalog item, which we will surface in our playbook later. Make note of the column names, we'll need that when we build the subflow. Next, we'll build a subflow to collect and process the flow data record based on the data definition we just created. Unfortunately, there's currently no way to unnatively access the variables on a flow data record like we would with the get catalog variables action. So for now, we're using inline scripting to get to them. Assigning them to flow variables makes it easier to use them in multiple subsequent steps. For this use case today, I've also built a small decision table and I use the variables as an input and I will map the decision output to my subflow output. This allows me to use a decision table to determine which path my playbook takes or run subsequent actions conditionally. Next, we'll create a new activity definition and choose the subflow we built for the automation plan. The subflow inputs will show up as activity inputs. And if we're creating a flow data record in our flow, it is recommended to have the associated record info and experience status be driven by that. Another common setting is to map the title and description to the activity instance label and description. To ensure that the flow data variables show in the playbook, set the form fields to vars. As advertised earlier, we'll need a way to tell our activity to save whatever input we enter for our variables. This can be done with an action assignment from the related list in the activity definition. The demo will show you all the steps taken here as well. After we have tested our first draft for the custom activity, we now want to create a custom activity layout. We highly recommend you clone from an existing activity to spare you the effort to set up all the necessary experience properties. Simply choose the layout that fits your use case best, then customize it from there. Once you hit the button Edit in UI Builder, a new browser tab will open with your activity UI in UI Builder. You can also get to it directly from UI Builder in the Experience Overview. You can use any features, data resources, events that are available here. To learn more about UI Builder, I want to recommend my colleagues' content in the Next Experience Center of Excellence. Brad and Maria Gabriela are not only publishing articles with guidance and FAQ on the ServiceNow community, but also run the Next Experience Academy and the UNI Builder Live live stream on YouTube. I highly recommend you check that out. It's awesome content. Lastly, if you create a custom UI for an existing activity that should only show under specific conditions, playbook activity overrides are the way to go. When everything is set up and done, you can now use your custom activity in your playbook. And with that, let's dive into the demo. If you've been watching my Academy videos or read my articles, you'll know that decision tables are my favorite thing on the Now platform, and I will never get tired of advertising their versatility. Thus, it should not be a surprise that I'm using one in today's demo as well. We have recently added a decision activity to Playbooks, which will support using a decision table in a future release. Until then, we can call a decision table from within a custom activity and output the decision results from the underlying subflow 
to use that result for conditional branching and stage conditions in our playbooks. For my example today, I'm using a decision table to determine the academy type based on the title and length of a planned session. I will surface the decision result in a subsequent instruction activity, but it can just as easily be used to drive conditional branches. As mentioned earlier, if we are looking to collect data from the playbook worker at runtime, but don't want to write it to a record just yet, we can utilize flow data with predefined variables. Prior to washing release, this table was not exposed in the application navigator, so we'll have to use the table name dot list shortcut to create a data definition. In my instance, I navigate to playbook experience, then data definitions. I will create a new record that I name new academy. After saving, I can add two variables, one for the academy title, which is a string, and one for the session length. I'll use the integer field type for this. Take note of the column name. We will need that in the subflow later. Next, I open Workflow Studio and create a new subflow. One of the ways to limit write access to the flow data record is by setting the excitement group and or assigned to user. If I want to be able to determine those when building my playbook, I can add two subflow inputs, which are then available as activity inputs. I already know I want to access the decision result, the academy type later, so I'm adding a subflow output for this. I can reuse an existing choice list from my Academy workflow task. The first flow action is create flow data, where I'm referencing the data definition I have just created. I map the assignment group and assign to user from the subflow inputs. The wait for user input checkbox ensures that the flow will not continue until the record has been updated with input for the variables. I mentioned earlier that we don't yet have an out-of-the-box action to retrieve the flow data variables, and we need to use inline scripting to access them. We try to use inline scripting as sparsely as possible. So if we need a variable more than once in a flow, it is best to use a flow variable to store its content and ensure we only need to update in one place in case something needs to be changed. Therefore, I am creating two flow variables to store both flow data variables. I can dot walk to the vars object and pick the variable with the column name we noted earlier. As the next step, I use the make a decision flow logic and call the decision table I showed at the start of the demo. I want to get the first decision that matches, and I don't need branches. The flow variables serve as inputs for the decision. Lastly, I will map the decision output to the subflow output so I can work with it later in my playbook. As I realized just now, I also want the Academy title to be available, and I can add and map another subflow output, then publish and test it. When testing a subflow with flow data, I can manually simulate a process worker supplying the necessary input by navigating to the record and updating the variables and the status. As you can see, the flow updates and completes successfully. And I also get the decision result as expected. After building all this groundwork, we can now finally put the pieces together and create an activity definition. For this, I navigated to Process Automation, Process Automation Administration, and then Activity Definitions in my Main Service Now tab. I give my activity a speaking name, then choose the subflow I just created. For a first step, I'll use one of the existing activity layouts, Record, to test if my activity works before I start creating a custom UI layout. After saving, I can see a whole page full of settings that go with the record UI layout. The settings that you want to do is mapping the associated record and experience status record to the flow data step record of the subflow.
Additionally, we can preset the activity title and description from the activity info when building the playbook. Then, I set the form fields to vars to surface them to the user working the playbook. And because they will also need a button to save the data and complete the activity, I am adding an action to do just that. Now we can finally return to Workflow Studio and create a new playbook. It's not really relevant to this demo which trigger I am using. This will depend on your use case. I choose to run the playbook when a new workflow task gets created. I create a first stage, then add my custom activity to determine the academy type. I add an extraction activity next, just to surface the first activity's outputs. Now I can test this playbook and look at it with the playbook preview option. I enter a session length and title, then mark the activity as complete, and ta-da, my test was successful. Next, we'll proceed to creating a custom activity layout. I navigate to Playbook Experience, Activity UIs and Layouts, and open the record layout. From here, I can clone it, and then give the cloned layout and default activity UI a more useful name. We recommend to always clone from an existing layout to save you the hassle of setting up all the experience properties and other connecting entities. Once you have renamed both parts, click on Edit in the UI Builder. There are virtually endless options of what you can do in your activity UI, and I won't be able to cover all of them and still provide a comprehensive demo. So I'll limit myself to adding a stylized text component so it's obvious when we see the custom UI in the playbook preview. Save the UI and navigate back to the activity definition. I am creating a copy of my activity definition, then change the UI layout to my custom one. I'll have to redo the configuration, but they're the same fields as earlier, so let's speed up this part a bit. Now I refresh Workflow Studio so the new activity definition becomes available. I'll add it and the instruction activity just like earlier, and then I test this playbook. As you can see from the big custom header text, we have successfully added a custom UI layout to our custom playbook activity. This concludes the demo for this Academy video. I hope this was helpful in lowering the barrier of entry so you can start building your own custom activities with the activity UI layouts. If you liked this session, please upvote this video. And whether you liked it or not, this survey is your chance to provide feedback or comments about this academy. I'm looking forward to reading your feedback. You can find the link in the video description or use the QR code shown on the screen. If you're interested in other topics beyond workflows, let me recommend my colleagues' academy series. Each of them covers a different part of the NAP platform. We have content about conversational interfaces, including virtual agent, mobile apps, analytics, next experience, workflow, core platform, and of course, artificial intelligence. While on the topic of more content, if you prefer to read up on topics at your own pace, check out the Workflow Automation Center of Excellence on the GNOW community. I've collected resources and links, and I'm regularly publishing new articles with best practices, FAQ, and guidance around flows, playbooks, and decision tables. Thank you for choosing to spend some time today to learn about workflow automation on the NAP platform. Thank you for providing your feedback and questions to help us make these sessions better for you. Until next time, bye.